Hi folks, if you're just getting started with Wimba Classroom, maybe you're a brand new presenter and you're getting ready for your first online session using Wimba Classroom and you want to know what are just the core basic things that you need to know to get started. Perhaps what are the seven core skills that you can reference and take a look at really quickly and get up to speed with running your Wimba Classroom session. This video is going to show you the seven core skills for brand new presenters and this video is by no means intended to be considered a full training session. At Wimba we do provide full core team training which is typically a one to three day on-site or online engagement. Where we provide training A to Z covering every aspect of Wimba Classroom. The purpose of this video is merely to show you the seven core skills that could be helpful to you to get started. Okay let's get started with the first of the seven skills and that is how do you speak using voice over IP online with Wimba Classroom. It's very simple to do that as an instructor or a student you can click on the talk button on the lower left and you just hold it down and that activates your audio and it broadcasts your audio to the whole class. Now also more conveniently you could hold down the control key on your keyboard and notice that will also activate your microphone and broadcast your audio to the whole class. Now this method is available to both presenters and students and an additional level of convenience for presenters is to go to your options menu and choose the lock talk option. Now when you do that notice now this is activated no matter what you do and it allows you to speak hands free and just focus on your presentation at hand. And again this is only available to instructors. It's not available to students uh, again to give you a more uh, higher level of control over your classroom. Okay so we've covered how to use voice over IP. Next how do we take a look at using text chat? Well on the lower left you have the text chat area and you can type in a message if you want to. I can say hello. If there was other people in the room I could use my drop down menu. I could select their name and then I could send them a private message and then that will show up with a gray background and only that person will receive it. They could also select my name from the list and send me a private message and then when you're ready to switch back to public text chat mode you simply choose main room from the menu and then now any message you send is public text chat again. So it's very easy to use public text chat or private text chat. This is a great way to ask students or participants to introduce themselves um, and break the ice as far as them using Wimba Classroom for the first time. Okay and by the way it's very easy for presenters to change room settings so that um, uh, private text chat is not enabled or not even an option for students. That again gives you more control over the classroom. Okay, so that's taking a look at text chat. Very simple to do. Next we have webcam video. This is also simple to start up. You're going to see a webcam video button in the bottom middle or just above your text chat area. Simply click on that. That brings up the video window. And now you've got three buttons at the bottom. The bottom left one is a little eyeball and it's closed. If you click on it, it opens the eyeball and that begins transmitting video. So if I click on that, it turns on my video and it also shows a picture in picture view of myself which I can make smaller or larger or I can even drag this to any corner of the window that I want to. And I can even turn off my picture in picture by clicking on this middle button right here. And then if I want to set my video to full screen, I can click on this button and just hit escape to return back to windowed mode. Now it's very easy for Wimba Classroom to automatically switch to the video of the person who's currently speaking. It has automated video switching. So if there's another user in the room and they had their video turned on, as soon as they start talking using the voice over IP, Wimba Classroom recognizes somebody else is speaking and it switches to their video automatically. The instructor doesn't need to click on anything to switch to somebody else's video. It's very seamless and very convenient. Now if I want to turn off my video, I just click on this button right here, the eyeball, to close the eyeball. That stops broadcasting my video and there you have it. So again, very simple, very easy to use the video in Wimba Classroom. Next up we're going to take a look at how to upload PowerPoints into uh, the Wimba Classroom live interface, which is what we're logged into right here. To do that, I'm going to click on this import button on the right side in my presenter's console. That will bring up a new window and I can click on choose file on a PC it might say browse and I'll click on that and I'll browse my hard drive and I can see that there's a PowerPoint on my desktop I'll select that click choose and now I'm just gonna click the import button 
and the length of time it takes to import your PowerPoints to Wimba Classroom depends on how many slides are in your PowerPoint. So if you have 70 slides, it might take a moment and you should be patient. If it has just a couple of slides, perhaps a handful, it will upload very quickly, like you've just seen here. And the way you can tell it's done importing your PowerPoints is it will show the list of slides in your presenters console that are in your PowerPoint. So I had two slides in this PowerPoint, and I can click on the first one, and there you go, there's my slide that I imported. There's the second slide in the slide deck, and it takes me back to my seven core skills. Okay, so we've taken a look so far at using voice, text chat, webcam video, how to import a PowerPoint uh, on the fly. Next up, let's take a look at interacting with the eBoard. And remember, the eBoard is our whiteboard tool palette, and we have an arrow tool which we've seen me play with already. There's also a pencil tool, there's a straight line tool, there's a circle tool, if you click on this again, there's a square tool. If you click on the pencil again, it turns into a highlighter, and I can choose a different color. So if I want to highlight in yellow, I can. There's a text tool. If I want to say, write something on the board. There's also an undo tool, which undoes everything that's on the board in reverse fashion, one thing at a time. There's different line thicknesses. There's different colors. And maybe you have something on the board and you want to just erase the annotations. You would click the Erase button. What if you've got annotations on the board and you want to erase everything, the annotations and the underlying slide? That's when you would click on the Clear Slide button and that wipes away everything. What if you want to import an image that you have on your computer on the fly into the eboard area? You would use this Import button. Next, if you want to save a snapshot of any activity that you or your students have done on the eboard, you could click the Save button and it saves a snapshot of it into your room. And lastly, if you want to enable the eboard tool palette for one or more students in your room, just click Enable and then that lets you enable the eboard tool palette to, again, one or more students, which is like virtually calling your students up to the front of the class. Okay, so again, in review, we've taken a look at Voice over IP, text chat, video, PowerPoint, using the eboard. Uh, desktop sharing with AppShare. Okay, so let's say that we want to share an application on my computer screen in real time to my students. I'm going to bring up an application first of all that I want to share, in this case a Word document. And now in my Wimba classroom I'm going to click on the share button on the upper right. That will give me a few options. I'm just going to go with my default options to make it simple and click begin sharing. And then in just a moment it's going to give me a couple more options on what I want to share. There we go. And I can see that I can select a specific window or a screen area or my full desktop. I'm going to stick with screen area because it gives me the most flexibility. And now notice I've got this red border on my screen. And whatever is within this red border, which I can make as large or as small as I want, whatever is within this red border is what is being shared in the Wimba Classroom for my students to see. Okay, and now I can interact with this Word doc in real time and they can see everything I'm doing. Or perhaps I can share a browser window and take my students on a virtual web tour. So it's very convenient to do that. Now I can end app sharing by bringing this window back into view and simply click on end sharing. And there you go. So that's application sharing in a nutshell. Let's take a look back at our seven core skill sets. We've reviewed most of these. The very last thing to take a look at is how to record your sessions using archiving. This is very simple. On the upper right, there's an archive option. There's a little record button. I simply click on this, and then it will ask me to confirm. I'll click OK, and now archiving will begin. There's an audio prompt saying that archiving has started, and you can tell because the button is now red. Usually do this at the beginning of your session, and then at the end, click on this button again to end archiving. Click OK to confirm. You get a few audio prompts that the archiving has been stopped, it's been saved, and it's now ready. So there you have it. Those are the seven core skill sets that you would need um, to very quickly get up to speed with using Wimba Classroom. Again, if you're a brand new presenter and you just want to know how to do the basic things, I would recommend picking some of the easiest things that you're most comfortable with out of the seven topics we've covered today and just start with those. And then again, use this video as a reference now keep in mind, again, this video serves as a very brief overview of Wimba Classroom, um, and we do recommend going to our website, wimba.com, and go to the Services section, go to Instructors, and click on Wimba Classroom on the left side, and here you can see full product documentation on how to use Wimba Classroom 
in detail it shows you A to Z on how to use the product. We also recommend that you click on the learning link to access our Wimba online workshops which are free one hour weekly training sessions to show you basic overviews of Wimba Classroom in a live environment. Hope this has been helpful for you and have a wonderful day.